a little town called Tarump. Really excellent name. There's a 79-year-old man with a story that goes back to the very beginnings of the Apple Corporation. Parump, Nevada is a small, dusty town 100 kilometres west of Las Vegas. Unlike its famous neighbour, there's not much to do here. But inside this small house lives a man with a big story. Ronald Wayne has lived in Parump for the past 10 years. He's a collector and trader of many things. Guns, stamps, coins and models. And this has... Not only all the serial numbers matching, but it even has the same matching serial number on the clip itself. Wow. And that is extremely... Wayne was working at the fledgling computer company Atari when he got friendly with one of his workmates, a man whose name just happened to be Steve Jobs. Uh, so I had occasions on which to uh, uh, meet with and, and, and communicate with uh, Steve Jobs. and talks together and uh, he at one point he got into uh, but you have to understand I was in my 40s at that time and Jobs was in his 20s and apparently uh, he and, and Wozniak were involved with a computer uh, uh, club where they were taking business computers and adapting them to individual private use they apparently had discussed the possibility of a company because um, Jobs and Wozniak had a minor altercation at the time and Jobs, uh, who was not all that much of a diplomat, um, a diplomat, that's somebody who can tell you to go to hell in a way that makes you look forward to the trip. Okay. Anyway, Jobs was not really able to do this too well. And he asked me if I would intervene and, and, and resolve this conflict that had developed between them. It was a trivial conflict, but it was a conflict nonetheless. And I said, fine, come on by the apartment one evening, we'll sit down, we'll talk. And apparently, at that moment in time, Jobs was so impressed with my ability to resolve this particular problem, he, right there and then he said, we're going to form a company. And uh, uh, he and uh, Wozniak would each have 45%, and I would be the tiebreaker. I would have 10% of the company. So, without even trying, Wayne had just become a founding partner in a company that would go on to become the biggest the world has ever known. Wayne's time with Apple wasn't to last. Just 12 days later, he went to the company's office and had his name removed from the contract. And my chances of ever getting a development project of my own were somewhere between Slim and none, and Slim's out of town. Had he held on to his 10% stake in the company, his shares today would be worth at least $40 billion. Amazingly, Wayne says he's never regretted his decision. And the last thing I wanted to do with uh, uh, Apple was to spend the next 20 years of my life in a big office in the back of the building shoveling papers. That's not what I had in mind. If I had stayed with Apple, I had every reason to believe I would probably have wound up the richest man in the cemetery. There is one thing, however, that still bugs him. And we each signed each of the three copies, and that was the founding of the Apple Computer Company. And the years went by, and uh, I had this copy of this contract sitting in my filing cabinet. I came across an ad of some enterprise that was looking for autographs. They dealt in autographs. Well, that's interesting. I got this contract sitting in the file, doing absolutely nothing. Uh, so I got in touch with these people, and uh, I sold the contract for $500. That was the same contract that 18 months ago went at auction for $1.3 million. That I regret. <laughs> Wayne's life has continued in a similar vein. Business ventures rose, then fell. He made money, then lost it or had it stolen. He's also written two books, which haven't sold that well, and he holds 12 patents, which he's constantly going to court to defend. And are, and are you happy now with, with, your, with your current circumstances? Happy. Interesting question. I'll put it to you this way. I've never been rich, but I've never been hungry either. When it comes to Apple, he's still in touch with his old mate Steve Wozniak and he continued to see Steve Jobs right up until his death. He also still has the original of the company's first ever logo that he drew. That logo, 
I recognized at the time was not a uh, uh, was not a 20th century logo design. It uh, it was 19th century. But when it comes to Apple's world-changing range of gadgets, this forgotten founding partner of the company has never owned a single one. Just Jim Clayton with Ronald Wayne, who sold his 10% share in Apple computers for 800 bucks in 1976. Unbelievable.